are listening to You've Got Five Options show, where every week Marta and Anna abandon their five children, two partners, and one cat to make a show especially for you. An artist, a challenge, a bullshit, a wisdom, and a surprise. Tune in and feel the magic of five. So let's go for bullshit. Say what? It's bullshit of the week. Okay, so the bullshit for me, the biggest bullshit and something that is very difficult for me to see, because very often we have those bullshits that they are also like the truth. And mm-hmm. they are kind of like there is often this double meaning and depending uh, from which perspective you take it, yeah. it, it, there is always something good in it as well. And I'm really seeing what, how you guys can help me get mm-hmm. that perspective on okay. it. So the bullshit for me is starting Christmas in November. Ooh, yeah. Um, I actually, you, you are right. It actually touches upon uh, what uh, Chris have uh, written to us because she or he has uh, said that it's tired with all the commercial bullshit around Christmas and starting Christmas in November definitely can be classified as one of those things, definitely. And I'm thinking like, this uh, celebrating Christmas in December when when the Christmas actually happens on 24th, 25th Mm -hmm. of December, extending that into entire month. Mm -hmm. That's already a lot. Mm -hmm. But extending it to entire month before, because it like literally, I have seen the first thing even before Halloween. So we are talking end of October. But Mm -hmm. in general, they, meaning corporations and shops and stuff, they wait until Halloween. Mm-hmm. is done and really as soon as 1st of November the shops start to get filled up with Christmas stuff. Yeah, I agree actually uh, in, in a couple of shops that I uh, do happen to shop uh, you take the Halloween thing and the same aisles uh, are straight away filled with Christmas stuff that's totally correct So help me find what's good about it That's a challenge What's good about it? People have new common topics to discuss <laughs> and rant about, I guess. I I cannot find anything positive about it, you know. I have to say that within the years, because I don't know how it is in other countries, to be honest. I remember back in a day when I was a little girl, and yes, it was in a different century. Um, I remember uh, that we were dressing up Christmas tree many times on a on the 24th of December. I know that some of my friends many times did it like three, five days before. Uh, Christmas was not even a topic until mid-December, I would say. People started to buy presents maybe somewhere around that time. And uh, and then you could really feel this magic of Christmas. It was very condensed. However, I also have to say that in Poland, traditionally, you keep the Christmas tree dressed up, I think, until January because of there is one Catholic tree, I think, until Three Kings, at least, the celebration, which is 8, I think, of January. So when I came to Denmark and it slowly started to, you know, especially the last couple of years from Halloween, jumping straight away to Christmas, Uh, I felt super uncomfortable with it and I started to notice that this Christmas magic is like truly diminishing. I have to say that I uh, started to break a little bit under pressure because, you know, if you have all the Christmas parades in all the cities on 1st of December or 30th of November already, uh, the Christmas tree in the city is dressed up. My daughter says that they dressed up the Christmas tree at the school and blah, blah, blah. I started to, to, to buy Christmas tree earlier than I usually was only because this is how it is. But all in all, I think this is a it's bullshit. Of course, it's bullshit. But, you know, like when you mentioned that uh, the parade, Christmas parade mm-hmm. starting like 30th of November or 1st of December, that's not all that bad. No, that's that's still In okay. Or whose uh, Santa started to arrive now around 5th or 7th of November. Okay. Way to go, Santa. So that's like really 
really way before Christmas. Mm-hmm. Dennis, can you shine some light from a Danish perspective? Why does it happen so early in Denmark? And now in a studio, we have our Danish expert, Dennis, <laughs> who will, like always, answer a question about Danish mentality. So the question is, Why finding so early? something good about no. two months of Christmas? No, it's like... In Poland, it starts later, still, yeah. even though we like U.S. and uh, we buy a lot of stuff from there and yeah. still doesn't doesn't Including start culture. so early. Mm-hmm. So why do you think it starts so early in Denmark? Is there any reason for that? Any money? Money? Yeah, I, I think so. It, it's 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 starting earlier. So you know this trend? Remember, yes, I, I might remember incorrectly, but. I think it starts a month month earlier now than it did when I was a mm-hmm. child. And I can't see any other reason than money. Okay. So now, is there anything good about it that you could point us towards? Two months of Christmas? Mm-hmm. No. Unless if it would come with some free days, more free days, that would be good. But it doesn't. It doesn't, no. Exactly. I, I, I'm I'm really not a fan of two months of Christmas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and also what like I'm surprised about is also the amount of waste that it uh, mm-hmm. drags along because <clears throat> all those Christmas parties, all the events in like schools, kindergartens, amount of times when I'm asked to bring some uh, cheap presents mm-hmm. for different types of games, Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, if you are asked to bring cheap presents, you... That you would normally not buy. You would, first of all, normally not buy. Second of all, cheap things are often made of plastic. And then you wrap it around in paper. Mm-hmm. So how does it come along with all the global warming and climate change and... Well, it doesn't, you know, because it's like, well, let's face it, we have a c- couple of narratives just running parallel to each other. And uh, it's it's very difficult to like, you know, ah, yeah, I'm, um, I'm conscious. And then I light up my house mid November. People see I'm in a Christmas mood. And, you know, it's like I actually I think I have posted a couple of uh, years in a row, some sort of a post like uh, stop premature Christmas decorating or like people who are, uh, this year I posted, people who are decorating uh, in November are responsible for early snow. And then I had people, you know, laughing, uh, those reactions, and then I had some comments and some people were like, yeah, guilty as charged, I love decorations. I think that in those were, by the way, expats, um, which could be relevant if I will come with this crazy theory that I think that Christmas, for most people, when we were children, was something very special. And Christmas was very special for me. You know, it was a time with family and the presents and I love the Christmas tree. For some reason, I believe that what corporations are doing, they are trying to um, to basically vulture on the fact that we are nostalgic and maybe we are in this crazy world going through some crazy sad things and we are just trying to prolong this Christmas magic period to suit ourselves, you know, because I do feel well home when I have my Christmas tree on, when I have candles on, because that's the good memories and I get the good, nice feeling out of it. So I think that this could be a, a connection of, you know, using a, a, a basically using our nostalgia of Christmas against us. And some people, maybe they feel lonely or they want to recreate that magic in their life because they are coping with some problems and the world is a scary place. So they just immerse themselves in a Christmas earlier than they should, which would be very sad because then it means that what November is like what? Come on, November has its own right. You know, it doesn't have to be December. Yeah, well, at least you've provided something good. I was looking forward to getting some perspectives. What mm-hmm. what good thing could come up? So, yeah, you could lift your mood up because that's I true. I think you could. That the months are long in wintertime in Denmark. Mm-hmm. It's very dark. It's mm-hmm. really dark already at 4 p.m. So shining some lights on the city. 
that could help people live the most. And I need to uh, say something also very interesting that it is something I have noticed at least in Vila. All the Christmas decorations they are disappearing on 27 of December. They are all gone. There are the you know the the I don't know the hanging things. <laughs> No, it sounds so stupid, but the whole city is decorated. What they live on are the lights on the on the tree, on the main tree and some other trees. But most of the decorations in the city are gone on 27 of December. And comparing to Poland, that is early because in Poland we keep decorations at least until after the new year. So, yes, they they start earlier, but they end up abruptly after 26, which is sometimes shocking. I think it's actually really shocking because you are like, oh my God, I'm back to reality. No, I still have New Year. And after New Year, you are really like, oh, I have nothing. And you wait until, I don't know, Valentine's, Easter, what what, <laughs> what other commercial way of coping with our uh, well-being do we have there on the menu? Okay. So, that was not supposed to be bitter. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> so mm-hmm. basically, I am still pro Christmas in December. Mm-hmm. I think it's okay to extend it. even. But, you know, even if you extend it uh, through December, you're still extending something by three weeks and a half. So Yeah, but then again, you know, it's yeah. like if you are abru- abruptly ending everything on 27th, then I think it's allowed. If you yeah. would continue until 15th of January, then it would be too much. Yeah. So still, I'm not doing anything Christmassy in November. Never. Um, no, no Christmas trees. No, um, no decorations for me. I mm-hmm. like it to be in December. But yeah. suit yourself. Yep. Suit yourself. The okay. Choice is yours. Let's go for some wisdom. A super wise. Wisdom of the week. Okay, so over the years here at You've Got Five Options, we have been receiving a lot of different Christmas challenges. Oh, yes, so we were. even if we are trying to lift our moods for the whole two months now, before Christmas actually starts, it seems like Christmas is still quite a tricky period where uh, maybe it's still really cool for uh, children, not always necessarily that cool for Adults, especially if your relationships with your family is not going so well or if you are feeling in any way lonely Mm -hmm. in that Christmas period. So for the wisdom, I have prepared something that is called make a good deed for those who really need. Was the rhyme intended? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I like that answer. Make a good deed for the ones uh, in need. I have to say that we were actually proposing that throughout our Christmas challenges. Um, this Marta didn't include the time when we were actually kind, compassionate and wise. But it, that's not the point. Um, I think there is a magic about Christmas. And yes, you can call me cheesy and even cringy. But I, I, one of my favorite Christmas movies is uh, A Wonderful Life. Uh, I don't know if you have seen the movie. It's an old movie from probably 30s or 40s with, I don't remember, Jimmy Stewart, I think, is playing. And uh, he is uh, going through a lot of bad things. He works in a bank. There are some money stolen and uh, his wife is upset with him. I will not spoil any of this. I will just say that he has a thought of, I think, killing himself. And it's Christmas. And then the angel uh, that is his guardian angel comes and tells him how the life would look like if he was never born. And then he sees the consequences. The movie is beautiful. It always touches my heart. But at the end, also all the problems, they get solved in a way. And you get that super nice feeling, you know. And uh, that's what Christmas was always for me all all about, you know, a time for making little miracles, time for helping people Uh, in Poland, as as probably you will hear on other podcasts uh, among those other weird information. In Poland, we have a tradition when we always leave an extra plate 
at the table in case a, 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 a homeless person or, you know, someone who's traveling and cannot get home doesn't have a place to, to spend Christmas. So there is a plate for someone. And that's what Christmas is about for me. I always try to do something nice for others on Christmas. I know it sounds stupid because, you know, where were you the whole year? Okay, I appreciate at least that I'm trying to do an effort on Christmas, okay? But it, it motivates me uh, a little bit harder. So um, I think it's a fantastic wisdom, Marta. <coughs> and I think you are very touched Yes. Uh, so basically, that's what I actually came up with. Like, what's what's like really simple and really wise for Christmas? And I think in all that Christmas frenzy, mm -hmm. in all that corporate bullshit <laughs> yeah. that we hear, that we hear, see and buy and so on, there are always people who we can help. And this can be less fortunate people. This can be people who are simply lonely. Mm -hmm. And we've had some examples. Uh, last year, Anna, you have actually created a group mm -hmm. that was called Show Some Freaking Kindness, mm -hmm. which was... Because uh, I didn't want it to use packing, so I used freaking. And, uh, and it was Christmas. And it was Christmas, yes. And it was a group where uh, it was like a advent calendar mm -hmm. where every day you, every day we, whoever joined that group, were trying to make something nice for those around us. Mm -hmm. Which could be a really simple, small thing. It didn't have to be a shebang or whatever. Yes, and I think that it was a really great idea. And I was thinking if you will repeat that idea this year again, but you did not repeat that idea. No. And I will uh, then say what, or I will not say, I will ask Dennis to go to the left field so that we can reveal what it was that you have figured out this year. Ooh, la, la. So this time we have quite a lot of time for from the left field. Awesome. We usually don't have that much time for uh, doing that. Mm -hmm. But it is also because I would like to wrap up the challenge at uh, at the end so that we can provide some um, yeah. conclusion. Conclusion. Actually, actually severe conclusion, <laughs> people. <laughs> yes. So, but let's yeah. start. Okay, Anna, tell us what you have come up with this year for Christmas. Okay, so I, I just now realized that I am from the left field on this episode. Well, guys, it's uh, it's another Facebook group. Surprise, surprise. Uh, but this time I, I was inspired by my own experience. I was looking for a little piece of jewelry for my daughter as a Christmas gift. And I wanted to start searching on Google and see some brands who have discounts. And then I kind of like slap myself. I will not show how it looks like, although I am on the camera, so I could. But I won't because I did this once on the show and I don't want to do it ever again. So no slapping. I will mentally slap myself. Oh, my God, that was close. And I was like, why the hell am I Googling uh, you know, like some kind of pieces of jewelry from some big chains or brands when I could actually make an effort and buy from someone who do, who do it locally. And then I was like, do I know someone? And then I realized that there is a, a Katy Perez, by the way, she was on the show, uh, I think, two times. She invited me to like a page on Facebook once. I think it was merea.com and it was something about earrings. So I had a vague like a memory of that. I went to find it. And then, indeed, she is selling jewelry, and that is a jewelry made by a Filipino woman who many times don't really have any other income, and they are struggling, and it's an organization for equal rights and uh, and also for, uh, like, some kind of social justice. And uh, she basically buys it from them and resells it here in, in Denmark. And uh, I will be honest with you, if the pieces wouldn't be nice, I would probably buy one just to feel myself better and be a good person. But it happened that the pieces were really nice. So I bought a couple. And, uh, and then I thought, hmm, you know what? There is a lot of things I would like to buy locally, but I simply don't have any information. I don't know the local producers. You know, I live in Denmark and, you know, maybe that we know that Denmark is a close circle. 
as we learned in our previous show. So, you know, I was like, I don't really have information. It would be cool to create a group when people can exchange with these experiences. So I would say I bought the earrings and this is the shop and I can also give my honest review, attach the pictures, and then we will have some sort of a pool from which we can actually, uh, you know, choose, pick some things. And I created a group. I added quite a lot of number of my friends and the, not many accepted, to be honest, but I didn't took it personally. Not everyone wants to be. Now there is so many groups and Facebook did it uh, now that you cannot automatically add people. They actually have to accept it. At one point it was automatic. So I think originally 35 people or something accepted from my friends and then people started to invite other people so now the group is four days or five days old and I have we have more than 50 members and uh, people that I don't really know and people start to share you know there is a lady here that is selling this and she has a warehouse in a basement and this is her products and i used it and it's cool or i am buying this in this local shop and it supports this and this so i uh, this is how i decided to help local small businesses because there is a lot of discussions of oh we are so wasteful with our purchases we are buying from big chains and uh, you know we have to make more conscious uh, choices then on the other hand we complain that local business is more expensive than the supermarket that you know I can um, buy uh, let's say a candle in Ikea for eight kronas and if I buy it from someone who does it you know home it will be let's say 35 kronas so of course I will buy it from Ikea yeah but then again we have to really uh, take a hard look on what we are buying because because things are so cheap in those supermarkets or, or whatsoever or on online we buy more and we buy things that we don't need so if we would start to buy less but we would we would probably send, spend in the end the same money, but we would support local people. And I also thought it's ex very, ex ex not expensive, <laughs> it's very important for December to ask people who are entrepreneurs not to post about their own business, because I know how it is to be an entrepreneur. Well, I have some kind of idea because I was trying some stuff. Currently, I'm not. But Marta, you are an entrepreneur. My life partner is entrepreneur. You are having your own businesses. And I know how easy it is to just think about, you know, how can I raise awareness about my business? How can I sell more? Where can I find clients? And sometimes, on the other hand, we are forgetting that in order to gain those clients, we have to become more... Um, we have to give more. We also have to buy locally or buy from independent. Because if we are having a small business and then we spend again in high hypermarket, then we basically, it, 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 it makes no sense. We have to start to build the circles where it is a common practice when we start to buy from each other. And uh, I think for a longer run, this will be very beneficial to all the entrepreneurs because if we will get this habit of trying to look for something either locally or just from a, from a self-standing person, um, it will help. I'm not saying that it should be overnight turn, you know. Of course, I still buy at the supermarket. And of course, probably 60 to 70 percent of my Christmas gifts I bought online, but 30 to 40 I bought from from entrepreneurs and that makes me happy for now. And uh, when I was uh, looking at that group that you have created, I don't remember who posted that, if it was you yourself or someone else, that when you buy something from this a very local independent person, when they see that you have bought something, they make a happy dance. Mm -hmm. Can so, you confirm that, by the way? Yeah, it's totally this way. Like uh, when you are just, you know, like being a person that has worked being paid by someone for a uh, vast majority of my life. I was working for almost 10 years in a corporation and then previously in a company for three years. It, you just take it for granted that you are paid every month. Mm -hmm. And when you are uh, an independent person, when you are, you can now entrepreneur is a tricky word. Uh, but when you are, when you don't have someone that is paying you directly and every month it can look very very different 
and you are actually selling yourself. You're selling mm -hmm. you, your heart. <laughs> you're yeah. selling. It's it's so difficult to be honest. Very often to make it when you are independent. So when someone actually wants to buy something from you, you really make a happy dance. It yeah. really, it really is, yeah. it really is so cool. So when you're buying something uh, from a local business, uh, especially new business, mm -hmm. the one that is not established yet, you are really making someone happy. Yeah, I, I, I could imagine that this is exactly how it is, um, because you know it's um, that's that's what you said. You know, someone puts heart time it's totally different experience when you are working and you are a salaried uh, you know uh, employee and you just get your money no matter what you did but here you you try and you create something be it a service being a beat a product and you put your thoughts your heart heart your emotion and then think also on personal level although it shouldn't be like this you also get validated somehow but you really make those people laugh and it makes a difference on let's say what they will be able to afford this month directly it directly really makes a difference so um I don't exclude the possibility that the group will change the rules after Christmas. So maybe then I will actually say, okay, people just start to promote your small local services. But December, I wanted everyone to focus on others. And if your listeners are uh, curious about this group, it's called This Christmas I Buy from a Small Business. In a brackets, say what? So uh, if you will find it, it's a public group. And of course, I will have to approve you as a member, but feel welcome to, to join. And I'm thinking about changing the group from this Christmas to this year when we will cross to 2020. So let's see how it will go. Well, I definitely hope that it will extend because people who are listening to us on the radio and on the podcast, they might not have much time to buy something for Christmas since it will be 21st and yeah. 23rd true, or 4th true. of December. Okay, so now we will give a very brief sum up to the challenge that we have received. And we hope, Chris, that we have given you some inspiration to how not to buy into the consumerism. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Corporations are ruling the November, the Christmas in November. Coca-Cola stole the Santa from us. <coughs> Yet still, you yourself don't have to buy into that. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to buy your presents in consumeristic way. You can do something that will make some small independent businesses really happy. Mm -hmm. We also hope that we have given you a little bit of inspiration when it comes uh, to how to improve your own mood, uh, meaning that you can do a good deed mm -hmm. for someone else. And uh, we also hope that at the beginning of the show, when we were bringing back some throwbacks from earlier episodes, we have also given you a lot of inspiration as how not to buy into the family drama. Marta, I have to ask you something. Do we have a ghost here? Because the cable moved and then uh, the glass moved. And it... No, that's just me. Okay, I got no, excited. No, you got excited. <laughs> I got so excited, you know. That Maybe it was a, a ghost of a, of a Christmas, you know. So that we have Christmas goats. Uh, goats. Um, goats. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas goat. Me. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, that will end up as a blopper one day. Yeah, that I will, will end be very up. embarrassed. But it doesn't matter. Yes, we are definitely hoping to have the fourth Christmas in You've Got Five Options mm -hmm. in one year time. So, Anna, I would like to ask you to say some Christmas wishes to our listeners for the end of the show. Okay, uh, guys, don't don't get crazy about all this commercial thing. Try to find in Christmas a little bit of magic, what it was originally all about. Uh, or maybe that was also created by corporations. But you know what? It doesn't matter. It's actually what you will make out of it. It doesn't matter who created it. If you believe that Christmas is a magical moment when we can help others, just freaking do that. Just freaking do that and support small business. 
Yes, and I would like to wish you a very Merry Christmas. I really hope that each and every single one of you finds the joy inside of yourself so that you can have joyous Christmas, no matter the corporations, consumerism, unnecessary waste, billions made by corporations, Christmas drama, and so on. Remember that you can choose yourself how you feel on Christmas. And if you happen to make your resolutions on a beach, on a beach, please send us a picture. Thank you. Bye.